Welcome back to the Sermon of the Week. I'm Robert Breaker, and this week's sermon I thought I'd get outside and do in the park at my second desk, if you will. I like to come out here sometimes at this little picnic table and read my Bible and study out in the sun. Well, the sun's a little bit hot, so please excuse me uh, for wearing my hat. I'm trying to keep the sun out of my eyes a little bit, and uh, I just felt like I needed to get outside today and soak up a little sun, but it's kind of hard. But there's also a little bit of wind. I hope that doesn't show up in the audio. But go with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 18. We're going to talk about the subject of doubt. Doubt. I get a lot of emails, and sometimes I get these emails that say, Hey, Brother Breaker, I, I don't know if I'm saved or not. Or I doubt if I'm saved. Or I, I don't know if, if I'm going to heaven when I die and things like that. And that's not good. That's not a good thing. Doubt is not something that God wants us to have. And it's important that we deal with, with that and find out why someone might be doubting. By the way, did you know the word doubt appears 13 times in 13 verses in the King James Bible? Isn't that a bad number, number 13? <laughs> I found that interesting. So hopefully this message will be a blessing to you. And if you're one of those that is doubting, maybe it'll help you to overcome doubt. But let's start in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 16 through 18. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and he appears to his disciples. And you would think they would be so full of faith. But notice what it says, Matthew 28, 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee and to a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So clearly the answer to doubt is what God said and trusting in his power. But it's interesting. They worshiped him, but some doubted. How could they doubt if they saw the risen Christ right there in front of them? I don't understand. I don't know, but they did. So let's look up the word doubt and find out what does doubt mean. Well, it means to waver or fluctuate in opinion, to hesitate, to be in suspense, to be in uncertainty. It means to fear, to be apprehensive. It means to question or hold questionable, to withhold assent from, to hesitate to believe. It is to distrust, to withhold confidence from. In other words, not trusting in. It's distrust, to feel with fear. It's uncertainty of a condition, suspicion, fear, apprehension. And the last definition of doubt in the 1828 Webster's Dictionary is the definition of dread, horror, and danger. And so I get these emails from people sometimes that say, Brother Breaker, I'm, I'm living in doubt and I'm scared and I don't know if I'm saved or not. And, and boy, I, my heart goes out to those people. I want them to be saved. I want them to know. So they ask me, how do I how do I believe? How do I get rid of this doubt? Well, let's go to Luke chapter 20. And an old preacher said one time, he said, if I could talk you out of your salvation, you were probably never saved to begin with. And I thought about that for a little while, and I said, yeah, that's right, that's right. When you're saved, it's because you believe it. And you believe in something. What do you believe in? You're supposed to accept the atonement by faith. When your faith is in that, you're fully persuaded, and you know you're saved. I believe in a no-so salvation. When you're saved, you know it. So if you don't know, then the first logical question is, were you ever saved to begin with? Can you be saved and doubt it? Well, I guess so. That's, maybe that's a possibility, but you shouldn't. I can honestly say after I got saved, I didn't doubt whether I was saved or not. But before that, I got the false gospel. And there's a lot of people out there in the world preaching the false gospel. And they're preaching what I like to call the repeat gospel rather than the repentance gospel. And a lot of folks out there, they say, well, you want to go to heaven? Just repeat after me. Oh, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please save me. Amen. And they say, if you just ask God to save you, then he'll take you to heaven. Well, what if you ask God to save you, but you don't trust? You don't receive him by faith. You don't put your faith in or believe in what the Bible says to believe in. Are you saved? No. All you've done is something with the mouth. And a lot of people tell me they do that, and they go to church, and the church tells them, oh, just ask God to save you, and they do that, and they say, well, now I don't feel any different, and I don't know if I'm saved. What do I do? And the pastor says, well, just repeat the prayer after me all over again. And they do that over and over and over and over throughout their life. And they say, well, I still don't feel saved. Well, yeah, 
If it didn't work the first time, what makes you think it's going to work the second or third or fourth time? You have to ask yourself, what am I trusting in to get me to heaven? And for a lot of people, they're trusting in the prayer they said rather than the blood that God shed. For a lot of people, they're trusting in their asking. But the true salvation, the true gospel, is not just repeat after me. It's repentance. What is repentance? It means a change of mind from unbelief to belief. So there's something that you have to believe in, and that's when you're saved, when you place your faith in that. And when you place your faith in the thing that you're supposed to have it in in order to be saved, all doubt fades away. Because you can always doubt what you did, but you could never doubt what Jesus did. Because that's unchangeable. It's done, it's finished, it's over, it's done on your behalf. And he said, it's one sacrifice for sins forever. And if you will trust what Jesus did, he will save you. Now, I said go to John chapter 20, I believe. So let's turn over to John chapter 20 and verse 24. John chapter 20, verse 24. And we're going to read all the way down to verse 29. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now this is what we refer to as doubting Thomas. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus says unto him, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet believed. So if you want a blessing, believe. You don't have to see to believe. What faith is, is believing in things you can't see. Now, some people doubt because they can't see. But we have the evidence in front of us. We have the scriptures. And if you read the scriptures, well, then you'll understand. And I think that's the problem with a lot of people is they don't read the Bible. A lot of churches you go to, the preacher tells you, well, if you do this, you get saved. A lot of people are trusting the words of the preacher rather than the words of God. And we're going to get into this. We're going to look at some scriptures. But according to the Bible, doubt goes away when you read the Bible. Because when you believe what this says, then you're persuaded. And then you know because you're putting your faith in what it tells you. Don't put your faith in a man. Put your faith in God and what he says in the word of God. So why do people doubt? What is doubt? Doubt is the opposite of faith. We know that it is faith that saves us. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's through grace, through faith, that we're saved. Not of works. A lot of people are trusting in what they do. And they're like, oh, I hope I did enough to get to heaven. No wonder you doubt, because you're always going to second guess yourself. You're always going to doubt whether you're saved or not, if you're trusting in you. But if you give up trusting in yourself and in your works and in what you do, and trust solely in what Jesus has done for you, all doubt goes away. Because now it's not on me, it's on Him. And He said He'd save me to the uttermost. If I believe, I believe. Now I'm saved to the uttermost. I know it because He said it, and I believe it. And that settles it. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17. The Bible says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that being rooted and grounded in love. So it's through faith that we're saved. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. I just want to give you a couple of verses. Salvation is not by works. It's by faith. And it's not by faith plus works. It's by faith alone. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Then back up to verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So we're saved by faith. We're justified by faith. Let's go back to Acts. Go back to Acts chapter 26. 
And there are so many verses in the Bible. Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. Acts 26, 18 says, To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So it's faith that sanctifies or saves or justifies us. And we're saved by faith, not by works. Those who have a works gospel will always doubt if they're saved or not because they're trusting in what they do and they're always wondering, well, was it good enough for God to accept me? That's where all doubt comes from, trusting in your own self-righteousness. To get rid of doubt, you must come by faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what He's done. Romans chapter 3. Look at Romans chapter 3 and uh, look at verse 22. Romans chapter 3 and verse 22. Romans 3.22 says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So it's through faith, it's through believing that we receive salvation. Verse 28 says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So if you're preaching a works gospel, you're not preaching the true gospel of salvation. It's not by what I do that makes me able to enter heaven. It's by me giving up trusting in myself, trusting in Christ alone, through faith alone, through His blood alone, and now I'm saved. And all doubt is gone. Romans 3.25 tells us what our faith should be in. It says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. I did a video years ago entitled Faith of Christ versus Faith in Christ. If you get a chance, look that video up. Because Jesus Christ had faith. And the very thing that Jesus' faith was in was in His blood atonement, what He was about to do when He died for the sins of the world, that that would forgive if we too would trust in that. So our faith should be in what He did because His faith was in, if I do this, I can save them. And that's a good video, faith in Christ versus faith of Christ. I believe that appears seven times in the King James Bible. So look that up if you get a chance. Uh, also, I have a video entitled, Have You Trusted the Blood? And I think that's probably... The video that the most people have said they've gotten saved from. Have you trusted the blood? Because the Bible says that we're saved by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the blood. And then in Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we're saved by faith in the blood, now there's peace. The Bible talks about a peace that passeth all understanding. And when you're saved, you have this overwhelming peace. And there's no doubt. There's no agony. There's no, oh, I'm so scared if I'm going to be going to heaven or not. No, now I'm saved. Now I know that I'm on my way to heaven. Now, we're in Romans. I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 14. So the question I have for you is, do you know that you're saved or do you doubt it? Because there's some people out there that say, well, it's healthy to doubt your salvation. <laughs> no, it's not. If you doubt, you need to ask the question, Am I saved? Because it could be the Holy Spirit of God dealing with you to get saved. Maybe you're lost. Now, other people say, no, it's the devil and you are saved. Well, I'm not very quick to say who's saved and who isn't because I don't know. I can't pronounce someone saved. I can't say, I absolve you of all your sins, you're saved. No, only you know if you're saved or not. So salvation is an issue between you and God. And you have to come to God and you have to choose Him and accept Him and trust Him as your Savior. And if you do, He'll save you. Then you'll have that peace. Then you'll know. But it doesn't come by trusting in you. It's when you give up all that you are, all your own self-righteousness, and you trust alone in Christ and His finished work, His shed blood. But go to Romans chapter 14 and verse 23. This verse is very interesting. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. It's telling us here that the opposite of faith is doubt. And faith is what saves and takes us to heaven. Doubt is what damns and sends us to hell. So if you doubt you're saved, it may very well be it's because you're not. And you're damned and on your way to hell. So it's time to get past that. It's time to put that behind you. It's time to give up 
and come to Christ alone for salvation. Don't trust in your works. Don't trust in your baptism. Don't trust in your church. Don't trust in a sacrifice or a ritual that they do because none of that saves. That's religion. Religion can't save you. Salvation is when you give up all that and you accept the free gift of eternal life that Jesus offers by faith. Now, let me be very careful to give the context now of Romans chapter 14 because the context is about eating, okay? He's talking about something sacrificed to idols, something that Thankfully, we don't have to worry much about nowadays. Um, but he says here, Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. He that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So it has to do with eating of an idol. That's the context, all right? I want you to make sure you understand that. But the principle is very sound in verse 22, that there's a difference between faith and that there's a difference between doubt. And it's faith that saves us, and doubt is the opposite of faith. So if you're living in doubt, then it might be that you're lost, and you need to be saved. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Doubt is the opposite of faith. You shouldn't doubt. Now, I'm not saying you're lost if you doubt, but a saved person shouldn't doubt. And I can honestly say, after I was saved, I didn't doubt it. I knew I was saved. Before I was saved... I doubted it every night because I went to churches that preached that bloodless gospel and they said, you want to go to heaven? Just ask God to save you. So every night from age 13 to age 18, I'd get down by my bed, sometimes crying on my knees and say, oh God, please don't let me die in my sleep and wake up in hell. Please save me. Please, Lord, I ask you to save my soul. And I wasn't saved. And so I did it the next night and I said it the next night. And I said, and I was trusting in my asking. I wasn't trusting in the atonement of Christ. So I thought it was because I repeated it, God would save me. I hadn't repented. I hadn't changed my mind from unbelief to belief. I wasn't trusting in the finished work of Christ. I was begging to be forgiven. I wasn't trusting in the blood. And when you trust the blood, that's when you're saved. So I just want you to understand that. A saved person should not doubt if they're saved. And in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, the Bible says this. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. It says, these things have I written. How do you get rid of doubt? Well, it's God's Word that takes away doubt. You have to go to the Bible. You have to go by what it says. So you have to read it. Let's go to Titus chapter 1. Here's the problem. A lot of people go to church, and they hear what some pastor says. And they believe that pastor. And a lot of times they're following what the pastor said and believing his words rather than the Bible's words. And this is all too common, unfortunately, in the world we live in where they preach the perverted, bloodless gospel instead of the true blood-stained gospel. And a lot of churches, you go to church, you say, hey, how do I get saved? They go, oh, well, just one verse, Romans 10 13. And if you'll just say, oh, God, I'm a sinner, please say me, amen, he'll take you to heaven. Because it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that is very, very, very shallow presentation of the gospel. And it's twisting the verse out of context. Because the Bible says, they that call upon the Lord of a pure heart. So if all you do is with your mouth say, oh God, save me. But with the heart, you haven't trusted. Calling upon the Lord from the heart is believing in the blood of Christ. Then you're lost. In a lot of churches, they don't preach the blood. They don't preach the gospel. They don't preach salvation by faith in what Jesus did. A lot of churches say, just repeat this after me. And if you say the sinner's prayer, they don't care if you believe from the heart or not. They say, then you'll be safe. Well, what if someone says the sinner's prayer, but they're not trusting in the atonement of Christ? Or what if they say the sinner's prayer, but they're still holding on to their works and trusting what they did, thinking, well, it's what I do too. Are they saved? No. They have bypassed Christ and the cross and trusting in Him alone. They're trusting in something else. So I'm not against prayer. You can be saved when you pray, but it's not the prayer that saves you. It's whether or not you believe. So rather than telling a lost soul, hey, repeat after me, I'm a sinner, please save me, amen. How about going to lost sinner saying, hey, Jesus died in your place and shed his blood for you. And he said, if you trust in his blood, you'll be saved. How about we pray, Lord, I'm a sinner. I trust your blood atonement. I receive you as my savior, amen. See how much better that is? Now, if a person just repeats it and doesn't believe it, they're not saved. But if they believe it while they're praying, 
then they have received salvation. So I find it atrocious what goes on in many churches nowadays. They don't point people to the object of the faith, which is trust the blood atonement. They tell people, well, just ask God to forgive you. Well, if we're saved by just asking God to forgive you, then why did Jesus die? He could have just stayed up in heaven and said, you know what? New prophet, uh, Jedediah, come here. Jedediah 3, 4, whoever just asked me to save them, I'll save and started a new dispensation where all you have to do is just say, oh God, please don't give me, don't, don't let me go to hell and he'll save you. But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus came down to this earth. He lived 33 years without sinning one time and he offered himself up on the cross and he said, it is finished. And he said, come unto me. And when you come to him and you accept that atonement, I forgot to read it, but it's in Romans 5.11. By, by receiving the atonement, you find joy. Romans 5.11, you must receive what Jesus did by faith. You must trust in what he did. See, a lot of people, they're trusting and they're asking for forgiveness. And they're asking to be saved. When the Bible doesn't say that, the Bible says, trust the blood atonement, then you are saved. So there's quite a difference there. But in Titus chapter 1 and verse 13, uh, excuse me, 1, uh, verse 1 through 13, it says, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in the hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So God can't lie. So you have to put your faith in what God says in this book and believe it. And it says, But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me to the commandment of God our Savior. So before a person can be saved, Someone has to preach the gospel to them. The Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Someone has to hear and understand and believe in order to be saved. That's not what a lot of churches preach nowadays. A lot of churches nowadays say the exact opposite. <laughs> a lot of churches nowadays, they lie. And uh, a lot of churches nowadays, what do they do? Well, they go to you and they say, you don't have to hear the gospel. You don't have to know anything about the gospel. Just repeat this after me and you'll go to heaven. That is not Bible doctrine. I've heard a guy say it like this. A guy says, it's not what you know, it's who you know. No, you have to know the gospel and who it's about. So it's who you know and what you know before you can get saved. I call this the order of salvation. Now, I'm not a Calvinist. I don't they have what they call their order of salvation and they throw in a bunch of predestination and foreknowledge and all. No, there is an order though to salvation and it's in the Bible. Go to Matthew chapter 13, 13 and verse 15. And it's very simple. Matthew 13, 15. If you get a chance, see my video on YouTube entitled The Order of Salvation. For this people's heart is wax gross and their eyes are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. So before you can get saved, you must first hear, then understand in your heart and then conversion comes. Other verses we've already looked at when you believe through faith. So it's salvation by believing in something that you've heard. How do you get saved in trusting the gospel if you've never heard the gospel? How do you put your faith in something you've never heard of? I mean, it's logical, but it's biblical. And many churches nowadays, I've heard pastors say this, you don't have to hear the gospel to get saved. You don't have to know anything to get saved. Just ask God to save you. That is anti-biblical. That is evil. That is wicked. And that's what leads down the path of doubt because a person says, well, God, please save me. Oh, no. Am I saved or not? I don't feel like it. I don't know. Uh, I'll just do it again. And, and they do it over and over and over. And they live in this perpetual state of doubt and they don't know what to do. So they just, oh, please save me, Lord. Please save me. And God's in heaven going, just trust me. Just accept me. I'm right here. Trust in what I did. And they're going, please, please. And they're asking God to save them apart from the atonement of Christ. No, you have to come through the blood. So you have to hear it preached. So it's just so frustrating and sad to hear so many people out there preaching a false gospel. The Bible teaches that you have to hear the word of God. James chapter 1 verse 21 says, You must receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. So before you can get saved, you've got to hear the preaching of the gospel. That's a sound Bible teaching. If any man says otherwise, he is a liar and an apostate and a heretic. 
the Bible, basic Bible doctrine is you must hear and understand and believe to be converted. There's no, you can get saved without ever hearing the gospel. And yet I hear that so much in modern churches. And that is anti-biblical. No wonder there's so much doubt because people are listening to what a man says instead of going to what the scripture says. The Bible says to receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. 2 Timothy chapter 3 makes it very clear. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stress to you and point you to the scripture. Should I go there? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. As you're turning to 2 Timothy 3.15, I used to go to a church years ago. And when I began going to that church, when they had an altar call, they would call people down and say, hey, you want to come forward and get saved? Come on down. Let us show you how to be saved. And there was usually this man that stood in the front of that church, old white-headed gentleman. And if a person came down and said, I want to get saved, he would take them in the back room. And he would go 20, 30, 40 minutes with them, taking them from verse to verse to verse to verse to verse to show them how to get saved. And sometimes I'd wait around after church uh, closed just to see what happened when the person came out. And they'd ask, well, did he get saved? Yeah, they understood and they believed. Well, I saw that man leave that church and I saw another man come in. And I saw things that really bothered me. And this is one of the reasons why we had to leave that church. Because people would come forward and say, hey, I'd like to be saved. And he'd say, okay, look at this verse, this verse, and this verse. Now repeat after me. One, two, three, repeat after me. And then the person would do that. And they'd say, okay, I pronounce you saved. And I knew some of those people. And I talked to some of those people. And they told me, I don't know if I'm saved or not. And one of them went forward and said, look, I, I don't know if I'm saved or not. And the man said, well, have you ever said the prayer? Oh, yeah, I said the prayer. He said, well, let's say it again for assurance so we can assure you that you're saved. Saved by the prayer. <laughs> it's not a prayer that saves us. It's the propitiation of Christ that saves us. Why wasn't he telling them, put your faith in the blood of Jesus? Why was he saying, now, let's just do the same thing over that you did the first time that didn't save you, and then let's, let's let you go so you'll doubt it all over again. Whenever I preach the gospel of salvation, I get emails from people that tell me, Brother Breaker, your message on the blood Help me get saved. And now I'm saved. Now I know I'm saved because I'm trusting in the blood atonement of Christ and I don't doubt it. So do you see the two different plans of salvation? Today, many have followed down that path of Bill Bright and Billy Graham of one, two, three, repeat after me, in which people think, well, if I just say the prayer, God will save me. And they're trusting in the prayer they said rather than the propitiation and the blood that God shed. So they're ending up trusting in what they do instead of what Jesus did. And when a person comes out and says, well, I, I did that, but I don't know if I'm saved or not. I doubt it. They say, well, just do it again. Repeat the prayer all over again. And they do it over and over and over and over and over. And they're not saved and they doubt it. Get away from that because that's man's gospel. That's what men tells you to do. Get to this, the Bible, and say, what does the Bible say? Because the Bible says it's through faith in the blood. Faith in the finished work of Christ. Faith in what Jesus did. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3.15. That's why we need this book. That's why we need the Bible. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So what is your faith in? When you go to the Bible and you ask the question, what does my faith need to be in? And you read it and you say, oh, put your faith in the blood atonement of Christ and you're saved. When you trust the blood, that's when you're saved. That's when all doubt goes away. That's when you know that you're on your way to heaven because you've received the atonement, Romans 5.11. So do you believe the Bible? Do you read the Bible? Oftentimes these people that contact me and say, Brother Breaker, I doubt if I'm saved or not. I say, well, when's the last time you read the Bible? Uh, you know what you need to do? You need to get this book. You need to start reading it for yourself because this book is the very words of God, and we read the verse earlier, who cannot lie. So don't believe in men, they can lie. Believe in the Bible. Don't even believe in what I tell you. Believe in what it says. Look and make sure for yourself. Read the Bible and see. Should I say this? Well, I'll say it. I'll say it, okay? There's this fellow on YouTube that loves to attack Robert Breaker. And uh, he has made some videos against me, and he says, that Robert Breaker fellow preaches another gospel. And he's a liar and a deceiver. I think one time he says, that Robert Breaker is demon-possessed or something like that. 
So that perked my curiosity, um, very judgmental, very critical person, but I said, hey, if he thinks I'm preaching another gospel, I want to know what the gospel is that he preaches. So I looked at a couple of his videos, and uh, I, I saw some other videos, I, I don't even think they're there anymore, um, in which they, they found an old tape of this fellow's testimony of salvation. And uh, that old tape of his testimony of salvation, the fellow said, well, when I was like eight years old, I didn't want to go to hell, so I just said, oh God, I'm a sinner, please save me. And I said, oh, okay, well, when did they trust in the blood atonement, that person? Never said. Well, then you go to this person's uh, YouTube and that guy tells you his testimony and he says, well, my testimony is uh, later in life I backslid and I, and I wasn't really saved even though I did that. And so when I was 20 something, then I came to God and then I said, Lord, I'm a sinner, please save me. And that's when I got saved. And I just looked at that and I said, he's not preaching the blood atonement of Christ. He's not telling people to place their faith in the finished work of Jesus. He's telling people just ask God to save you. And by his very own mouth and his own confession, he said he did it when he was eight and he didn't get saved. So the thing he tells you to do to get saved, he did at eight years old and then he said it didn't work. But then he said he did it again at age 20 something and that time it worked. I'm like, this guy should be in a mental asylum. This guy has no understanding of the Bible. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different uh, outcome. Well, this guy tells you that this is how you get saved, and I did it, but I didn't get saved, so I did it again, and that's when I got saved. I just looked at that and said, man, Lord, save that guy. Get him the truth. Help him to see that he's deceived. And I can't tell you what's been a blessing to me is over the years how many hundreds, literally hundreds, maybe even thousands by now, people have told me, Brother Breaker, I used to watch that fellow on YouTube, and he had me doubting if I was saved or not, and I was so confused, and I would come to your video and that's when I got saved. Because you pointed me to God through the scriptures and you pointed me to salvation through the blood. That guy didn't point me to anything but to myself. So I said, wow. So it's just, it's sad to me that there's people out there that, that bypass the cross, bypass the blood of Jesus, and yet they want you to think they're saved. And yet they doubt if they're saved or not. If you come to Christ through faith, you're saved. Let me show you what the Bible says here. Let's go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. The Bible uses the term fully persuaded. And that's what salvation is. It's being fully persuaded in your own mind and in your own heart. And it's trusting in what the Bible says to trust in, the blood. And that's when you're saved. And then you know that you're on your way to heaven. There's no doubt. Why? Because you're fully persuaded. Romans chapter 4 and verse 20 and 21. And we read in Romans chapter 4, verse 20 and 21, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. This is Abraham. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. So God gave the Bible, the scriptures, that gives us what God said how to be saved, the gospel. When you come to those scriptures and you read and you understand and believe, Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Then you're saved. That's what the Bible teaches. And you should be fully persuaded because all doubt is gone because I believe it because God said it. Okay? Let me show you another verse. Romans chapter 14 and verse 5. Talking about being fully persuaded. Romans 14, 5. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Are you fully persuaded? Do you know for sure that you're saved and on your way to heaven? Or do you doubt? Well, if you doubt, it could be, now I'm not saying it is, but because I don't know your heart, but it could be you have never been saved. You've gone to one of these churches that preaches the bloodless gospel and they told you, well, just repeat this or just say this. And you're thinking, well, that's what I had to do to get to heaven, but you're trusting in that rather than trusting in the finished work of Christ. No wonder you're lost. Repent, turn from unbelief to belief. Turn from trusting in what you do or say or did and trust solely upon the finished work of Jesus Christ, what he did in your place. Romans chapter 8 and verse 38. Romans 8, 38. The apostle Paul doesn't say, well, I doubt if I was saved or not and I don't really know and I just hope, fingers crossed, I get to heaven when I die. That's not Bible doctrine. 
Yet a lot of churches nowadays, they tell you, no, it's healthy to doubt if you're saved or not because you can't know if you're saved until you die. <laughs> that is not Bible. That's a lie from the pits of hell is what that is. Paul says it like this, Romans 8, 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sounds like he knew he was saved. No doubt there. He didn't doubt it at all. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. The Apostle Paul knew beyond any shadow of a doubt that when he died, he would be absent from the body and present with the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. The Apostle Paul says, I know whom I believed, and I am persuaded that my sins are gone, and I'll go to him. The next verse says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. It's what the Bible says, not what men say. My faith is not in man and what man told me. My faith is in Christ and his precious blood. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22. Hebrews 10, 22 says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Full assurance of faith. Faith in what? Well, the gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. And the gospel is, verse 3 and 4, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus died in your place for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He has eternal life and he offers that eternal life to you. But it's not just that he died and was buried. It's how that Christ died. How did he die? He shed his blood. For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And it's funny because it says, by which also you're saved, wherein you stand, that which I have also received. So this is the gospel, verse 1 and 2, that you must receive, that you must stand in and that you must believe, unless you believe in vain. What does it mean to believe in vain? Vanity, self, is one way to look at that. It's believing in yourself and what you said or did, rather than what Christ did. Or to believe in vain, possibly, is to believe in your mind, but not accept with the heart. Wholeheartedly believe it from the heart. A lot of people out there that know it, oh yeah, I know Jesus died, was buried, rose again, yeah, yeah. They believe it up here, but they haven't received it down here. They're still holding on to something else rather than giving up and receiving Christ by faith alone. How are you saved? Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Let's go to Matthew chapter 14 and verse 31. So this message is for you. And this message is, do you know that you're saved? Do you know beyond any shadow of a doubt that when you die, you'll be in heaven? That's the question. If you look at me and you say, no, I don't know, and you're living in doubt, then you need to come to the Bible. You need to read what it says, and you need to take a good long look at your heart and see what it is that you're trusting in other than Jesus to take you to heaven and his precious blood. Matthew 14, 31, it says here, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, Wherefore didst thou doubt? We're not supposed to doubt. It doesn't take a lot of faith. Saving faith is just faith. Sometimes I get this question, how much do I have to believe? Enough. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And God asks you to put your faith in him. Matthew chapter 8, verse 2 through 6. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. So God says, come to him by faith faith of a child. A child will just basically believe whatever you say. <laughs> Come to the Bible and say, Lord, I'll believe whatever you say, and then read it and study it and look at it. 
In the Bible, it's called faith. It's also called believing. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. It's also called trust. To be saved, you must trust the gospel. You must trust the finished work of Christ. You must trust in the blood. When you believe, you receive by faith. Faith and believing is the same, and it's called trust in the Bible. Ephesians 1.13, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So the gospel of your salvation, you must believe. That's the blood atonement of Christ and what He did for you and how He rose again. And if you will accept that by faith, then God will save you. And when you're saved, there won't be any more doubt. I, I alluded to it. I just I can't bring myself to stop without reading it. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. Salvation, Romans 3.25 says, through faith in His blood. The Bible says you're saved by faith. What is faith? It's accepting. It's receiving by faith. It's trusting in what Jesus did. Romans 5.11 says, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. How do you receive the atonement? By faith. Verse 9, Romans 5, 9, Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Verse 1, Therefore being justified by faith. You're justified or forgiven and saved by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Why are there churches out there that leave out the message of the blood? Why are there pastors out there that say, No, you don't have to know any of this. You just repeat this after me. Why are there pastors out there that say it's healthy to doubt if you're saved or not? I believe the only answer is because they're lost and they need to be saved themselves. Because they themselves doubt whether they're saved or not. And it's because they haven't heard and understood and believed in the blood of Christ. They're still thinking, well, if I do good, God will accept me and let me into heaven. So they want to trust God a little bit, but they want to trust themselves a whole lot. That nullifies what Jesus did because Jesus said, come unto him by faith alone. Trust completely, 100% in Jesus to take you to heaven. Because if you add one drop of your own self-righteousness, that's enough to send you to hell. God wants 100% of your heart, not 99, not 98. It's not faith plus your works. It's faith alone in the finished work of Jesus Christ. I don't know how to say it any harder, any plainer than that. So, do you doubt if you're saved or not? A lot of people ask me, Brother Breaker, uh, can you help me? I have some doubts. I have a video on YouTube called Assurance. Watch that video. I have a video called The Gospel, a video called The Order of Salvation, a video called The Doctrine of Blood Atonement, a video called The Doctrine of Justification. Then I have How to Be Saved, How to Get Saved, how to know you're saved, assurance of salvation. And people ask me and say, Brother Brick, I, I, how do I get saved? I say, watch those videos. And more times than not, they write me back and say, I understand now. I've accepted the blood atonement of Christ on my behalf. Now I'm saved and I know it. I hope you too will get saved and know it. If you got saved through my ministry, please leave that in the comments and let us know. If you were one of those that followed that guy over there that was confused by him and his Lordship Salvation message, let us know. Let us know. It's encouraging to hear people get saved, but there's others out there that aren't saved that need to hear the message, and your testimony could really be a blessing to them. So please leave in the comments if you got saved watching this video. God bless you. I hope this has helped get rid of all doubt, and I hope the thing above all that you get from this is Always go to this book and believe what it says because this is what takes away all doubt, believing what God said. And I will always do my best to point you to what He says. I don't want to follow what men say. I want to follow what God says. Well, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.